What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Trade Talk video. It is Wednesday ahead of round six. So we final week of best 18 just for a little bit until we hit the mid-season buys, but it will be good to go back to normality. But uh, this is a good week to be fixing up uh, sort of getting ready for best 22. So if you've got a few issues, maybe just having plans to get some cash to fix up next week or fix it this week. Um, obviously some good rookie options coming through, which is good. So we'll go through all those and all the options uh, um, that people are training in and out this week. Uh, but as always, if you uh, are enjoying the content around here, please let, make sure you smash a like on the video. Be very much appreciated. You guys keep hitting 100 on the trade talk. So let's push to 200. Let's see if we can get 200 likes on uh, the trade talk video today. That'd be fantastic. And yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're nearly at 2,050 subscribers. So... Still a fair bit off, but we're trying to get towards 3K subscribers. So if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure that you do. And also, if you didn't check out last night, uh, obviously me and Tim, um, Guesty, we were live uh, doing a live Q&A. We were joined by Holmesy from the Pod Pod and Mini Monk from the Coaches Panel. So answering a heap of questions. We went through all the big talking uh, sort of points in terms of like fantasy coaches uh, heading into this week. So make sure you guys check it out. Um, it was, yeah, it was really good chat. Um, obviously, two great minds in Homes in Minimart, they're obviously going very well, and obviously Tim's always uh, always great as well. So make sure you guys check that one out as well. Just uh, head to the channel and you can um, catch the catch the replay. So let's get stuck into the most traded in-out players. So Will Graham is the most traded in player. Nearly uh, over 23,500 coaches are bringing him in. No surprise. Had a 104 last week. Looked really good uh, with his 14 tackles and 14 touches. Negative 29 break even. I think it's... I, I, know, we, I know we don't normally like the term must-haves, if if you will, but I think Will Graham's pretty close to that. Negative 29 break-even. If you don't have him, I think you've got to jump on. Like He's shown at least the ability to put up a big score. He even got a 63 the week before, which isn't too bad. His Tom Grant took a bump, which was good. Good to see. So um, if he can put it together, if he can get some, a lot of tackles and put maybe a 20-touch game together, we, we could see a guy that consistently hits 65, 70 plus um, on a regular basis. So I think he's a fieldable option. Um, I think a lot of people bring him on the bench, but it might be good if he shows something against Sydney at the SCG this week. Then you can downgrade maybe a field option um, in terms of like a rookie field option and field Will Graham with confidence. So um, yeah, I'd like him and I think you've got to bring him in regardless. Um, I think you just got to try and find a way. Sam Walsh is next. 13.3k coach are jumping on him. He looked fantastic. Um, I, I Obviously, watching that whole game, being a Crows fan, I do want to go back and actually just watch his individual highlights. Um, so actually sort of get a bit of a focus on Sam Walsh. So I wasn't focusing on him too much, obviously, as a Crows fan. Just sort of wanted to win the game. But he was really, really good. Um, obviously, Tom Grant, a little bit low. I think normally he's upwards of the 80% mark. But 34 disposals, 13 tackles, that was fantastic. The, the ability that he showed to get the 13 tackles was very good. Not a lot of marks, but I think on another day he gets a, a few more of those. So there's an ability that I know the 145, you're not going to score that every week. But I guess if he gets his 30-odd touch and can get a few marks and those tackles are there, then I think that there could be a chance that he is a guy that goes at that 110 um, range there, so I like him at a discounted price. What's he? Uh, he's priced at what is it? What um, eight eight six um, seventy three break even. He's going to make cash. Obviously, the fixtures are a little bit sort of iffy. Um, Cogs being out is probably not a bad thing. Obviously, not a bad thing for Walsh. Um, like he's he's it's going to be a little bit easier with with one of their um, prime movers not in there for the Giants. Geelong Collingwood, I think. A, reasonably okay for midfielders. I think Melbourne's decent enough as well. Sydney SCG is a bit tougher, but got a pretty good history against Sydney as well. Uh, Gold Coast is at Marvel, Port, and then Essen. So a bit of a mixed bag in terms of matchups, but I think Walsh is the sort of player that can can score well against anyone, um, I think. So, um, yeah, I really do like Walsh as an option. Um, I think the fact that Cher is missing a couple of weeks is good, and also the fact Dockett, obviously, well, it's not good for Cher, but obviously good for Walsh, and obviously Dockett out for the whole season. So, uh, last year, had some lower scores, obviously not playing the midfield as much, but we know for a fact when Sam Walsh has 65 70% plus CBAs, he's a 110 guy. So, and I think that's going to be the case. you got Cripps there, you got got um, Hewitt there, and I think Walsh is going to be that other guy. Obviously, you got Kennedy. When Chera comes back, um, they'll be there as well. But I think Walsh is going to be in the midfield plenty. So, um, for me, I like uh, Walsh as an option. Blake Drury, 6.6K, jumping on him. 101 last week. Don't quite know how he did it. I know he got 11 marks. I know he got 101, but negative 26 break even. 
I don't know if I can go there just because I'm scarred from last year after jumping on him. Um, but hey, if you're looking for a double downgrade, getting a guy like him and Will Graham, you're getting two players who got negative 20 or more break even. Um, Going to make plenty of cash. As long as he can get 50s and 60s, um, he'll, he'll make cash. The obviously trouble is he could be like a Harvey Thomas where he drops a 10 or a 20, gets subbed out, and then he only gets makes you like 30k 40k and then it's stunted a bit unless he pops 80 like harvey thomas did so i don't think he's a must-have but he's he's a good option if you're looking for some cash gen so look at that if he gets a 48 he's predicted to go up about 57k so uh, i don't mind the blake jury pick uh, especially if you've already got one of the gold coast guys and you're looking to do a double downgrade sam closey um did it again another good score on the weekend he's up to 339k I think if you don't have Closey and Will Graham, I think that the double downgrade is definitely worth considering um, strongly. Um, if I didn't have both, I would probably be doing that just because negative 37 break in for Closey, negative was at 29 or whatever it was for Will Graham. Um, so like really low break evens for both of them. Um, you're going to want both in your side because they're going to make bulk cash very, very quickly. Yeah, negative 29 break even. So for me, I like both. Um, yeah. Um, Closey would be my priority. If you don't have him, I'd get him first just because I think that wing role is is his. Um, whereas Graham, you could see a poor game or two. Maybe they bring in um, another midfielder potentially. But I like I really like both. And I don't think that's going to happen. If I'm just saying if you're splitting hairs between two. But I'll be getting both if you don't have both. Hugo Garcia um, scored a 53 last week. Just over 5K coaches jumping on him. Looked really good. Um, just loves to tackle. Like we, we know that in the VFL, num- uh, VFL games, he's... Got plenty of tackles, 222K. I, he's not a must-have this week. And I think the Thursday night game, locking in a trade is also probably something you've got to factor in. But obviously, 53 from only 34% game time, seven tackles was great. I think he's going to be a good option. I'm looking, I'll am looking. i be looking at him next week. He'll probably be my downgrade option next week. Um, so yeah, definitely one to look at. And you can go this week. Um, obviously, we've talked about double downgrade. If you've got Closer, you do have Graham, you've got Drew, you've got Garcia, we've got a big old new one who we'll talk about. Obviously, Combin. Um, probably a bit late for a guy like Combin. Um, there's one I'm forgetting. Uh, Drury. Oh, no. No, they're the three. So you got those three. Um, and I think Garcia's would be... Probably my pick out of the three, just if he if he's not the sub, just because of the scoring capability I think he's got because he tackles so much. So, um, yeah, I like him. Sam Flanders, if you don't have him, 3K coach are jumping on him. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, he looked really good last week. Being tagged by Finn McGuinness, just a lazy 125, if you don't mind, from from Ned Flanders. Um, he was really good. Um, he's been good all year. Uh, average 105. Uh, just been solid. Three tons in his last four games as well. Um, we know the dogs have been tough to score on. So that's his only sort of poor score there. Um, Sydney a bit tough. He's got the uh, West Coast, which is good. Brisbane a bit tougher. Then he's got North Melbourne, which is good. Obviously, North Melbourne and Geelong are, are at TIO. But I feel like he's going to score well anyway. Like, he's, he's thirst for the footy. I noticed, um, obviously, owning him, I was able to watch him a lot closer. And he sort of leads. If he doesn't get it, he'll sort of retreat back. Then he'll lead again. Like, he'll do three, four, five leads to try and get the ball. So that's really, really impressive to see. And if you don't have him, I would definitely be uh, looking at jumping on him. Uh, Big O and Yuan, uh, just over 2K coast are jumping on him. Again, don't mind him. Um, 83 last week, 244, negative 14 break here. I'm going to make some cash. Obviously, the only um, um, flag for him is he's a key defender. So there could be a, he could score a 30 next week, and and he's not make as much cash. So, But again, if if you like him, and he, he'll probably get defender status. Um, uh, no, he won't this time around because it's only one game. Um, he'll only have two games for DPP. So he would get DPP in round 12, um, not in round six. So I can't actually use the DPP thing as a good thing. So he'll just be a forward. But again, could be an option um, that you look at um, downgrading to. He might be the one. But I think I'd still prefer Garcia with that mid-forward flexibility, the high score, okay, Billy, stuff like that. So that he... That is who I'd be getting there. Isaac Heaney, um, over 2K coach, jumping on him. You could. Average of 120, he's expensive. Um, up at 943. Like, that's that's what, at a 110 or so, 110 plus average he's priced at, I think, or, or in and around that. He's been great and scored under 100. No Parker this week, so he's going to continue um, on what he's been doing, I think. So I think you, you can jump on him. I just don't, I think if you don't have him, I'd almost just want to sort of not take him on per se, but maybe just not worry about getting him. And maybe you watch a few games of Parker in the side. And, and if he's still got the midfield, then jump on. You're paying an extra 40, 50K maybe, but 
you get that sort of look to see if he's got going to keep that role with those guys back, which I think he will. Um, but yeah, he is he's an option you can get. It's just I don't normally like paying up for guys at this point. A little bit the same with Jack Steele. So he's a 1.7K coach, so jumping on him. He's been fantastic. Like, um, I've got the decision to make on Thursday night, him or Bont VC. I think I'm going Jack Steele VC, and I didn't think I'd say that at the start of the year just because he's been too good. Like, over 120 his last four games, he got the 108 in round one, his marks are back, his high, I, I took, excuse me, I talk about it every week. Like, his tackles are there still, his marks are there. He's going to have a game where he has, like, eight, nine, ten marks and has, like, well, he, like he did here. He had 29 touches, 9 marks, 7 tackles. But I could see a game where he gets 8, 9 marks and 10, 11, 12 tackles and puts up a 140, 150. And that could be this week against the Bulldogs, who high stoppage team. Um, we know Jack Steele loves his tackles. Um, so that could be it could be a B score coming for Jack Steele on Thursday night and uh, is a VC shout for sure. Um, but he's 997. He's looked really, really good. If you've got the cash and you want to spend it, I couldn't talk anyone out of it. It's just when you see guys like a Sam Walsh is 100k cheaper. You've got Errol Goulden's uh, 60k odd cheaper. Daycos is about 90, what, 90 odd k cheaper as well. When you've got options like that that are cheaper, I, I tend to lean to uh, getting them instead. But um, he's been so good that you could look at it. And then the 10 to most trading player is Elliot Yo, 1.2k coach. So jumping on him, obviously didn't get suspended for his um, tackle. Did you get a few people worried? I wasn't as worried. Um, I thought that he would be okay after watching it, but it was just good to see him, um, that he wasn't suspended anyway. But 7-6-7, seven, seven, I think it definitely is still not too late. Uh, 64 break even. He's been really good. Like his points per minute is fantastic. Like He's playing like low 70% game time, and he's still putting up 90-plus scores most weeks. Obviously, the one poor score was against Port Adelaide. Um, but yeah, his tackles, his tackles weren't there on the weekend, but they normally are there. Um, Frio this week in the Derby. Um, and I, I, I expect to see this number slowly start creeping up, maybe mid-70s um, to closer to 80. I don't think he'll play much more than 80% game time. I just don't think he's that type of player. But I think as long as the season goes, it, you might see a bit more of an uptick. But he's been he's been great. So it's definitely not too late to get him. He's still under 800K, so he's still an option there. A few options here. Marshall, yep, love him. If you're looking for a ruck this week and you're going up, uh, Marshall's a great option. Obviously, looked great last two weeks with back-to-back 130 scores. Um, yeah, look at that. All scores over 115, bar that one against Collingwood, who have been restricted for rucks. So, yeah, Bulldogs this week. English a good matchup. Port Adelaide's a good matchup as well with Soldo. Then he's got Sherry, Meek, then the Freo combo. But his next two match in particular are really good. So, yeah, for me, I like him as well. Zorko, with Zach Barley being injured, there is a flag that he does go forward. So I'd probably wait one week just to see what his role is this week. But he's still not a bad option in a forward line where there's not many options. She's was very expensive. I wouldn't be getting him this week with the Finn McGuinness tag likely going to him. If Finn McGuinness was to get dropped, um, that would change things uh, if you don't have him. So I think you need him, but it's tough paying a million dollars this time of year. It's like you've missed so much cash and so many of those good scores that maybe teams start putting attention in. You want to wait for him to drop a bit in price, but he might be a guy that just doesn't get that much cheaper because he's looked so good. Um, so Errol Goulden, I, I, I do like this pick, um, targeting him this week. I'll just be careful. He does have the round uh, 12 buy, so just make sure you're not too heavy on those buy players there. Gold Coast this week. Hawthorne, I'm still a little bit worried about a potential Finn tag. I could see Finn just playing on a wing. He did play on a wing a little bit against Collingwood like in the last quarter and second half when he wasn't tagging. So I could just see him lining up on a wing and tagging Goulden um, in that game. So that's my only flag. Um, I'm probably not looking at him going him this week. I might go him post that Hawthorne game um, just to be safe. Um, or I might even wait till after his buy. But I think Goulden is still a good option regardless. Um, he's, I think he's going to see an uptick with those guys, uh, other Saints mids coming back. And then final one to talk about as well, Tom Power. Um, again, I don't think, I still don't think it's too late. He's still under 750k at 742. He's gone up a lot, but he's looking like a top six forward. Another 113 score last week against Geelong, who aren't that easy to score against. Um, he's been great. Um, three scores over 100 in his last four. Um, yeah, I, I still like the pick. And, and Hawthorne, Crows, Saints, uh, Suns, Essendon is, is not a bad uh, run of five games coming up for Tom Powell. So I like him if you don't have him. So there we go. They're the most traded in players. Let's go the most traded out players for the week. 
Um, yeah, no surprise there. Kyle McKercher, 23.6k jumping on. I think, again, the most common trade um, will be Will Graham to Kyle McKercher. Well, 23.6k have jumped on Will Graham. 23.6k have jumped off of Kyle McKercher. So that's going to be the most common trade this week. Um, McKercher down to Graham. And I like it. It's a good trade. McKercher got a break even at 87 with that two from last week. It sounds like he could play this week, but I still think I'd be jumping off. Um, it's not unless he pops a hundred plus score. He's not making any cash any time, like quickly. So for me, and the role change as well. He's gone more in the midfield of late. So and that's meant his scoring's actually decreased. So for me, I would be uh, trading him this week and m- m- probably making it more of a priority just because of he could lose cash if he puts up another fifty and then start dr- bleeding cash. Um, Massimo, uh, yeah, he can go as well. 6.4K jumping off him. The scores just haven't been there um, since the first two weeks where he got the 90s. Um, Tom and Grand's dipped as well. Obviously not as bad last week, but the week before was was obviously low. Like He's just scoring between 55 and 65. A rookie can be doing that. So, yeah, again, a trade from him down to Graham is, still, is a good option as well, or even a close if you don't have him. Um, so, yeah, he is a guy that I'll be looking to trade out this week myself. Uh, same with McKercher there. Matt Crouch. This is very team dependent for me. Um, if you have got um, like a good option on the bench to play for the week, you could hold. I'm probably in the camp of, and again, it's easy for me to say because I don't own Cratch, but I think I'm in the camp of trading and for a few reasons. So one, that the Adelaide midfield is, we don't quite know what's happening. There's a bit of a revolving door with so many names going through that. Like you've got Dawson, Crouch, Laird, Berry, Saligo, um, Rochelle, Rankin. Like, there's all these names going through the midfield that we don't quite know who the top couple are going to be. So I think in terms of like a Jordan Dawson, who I'm sure will probably be on this list somewhere and, and maybe even a bonk just because uh, frustrated coaches. But, um, yeah, for me, Crouch has, has essentially done his job. Like, he's he's still gone up, a, a, like, what, 100-odd K, I think it is. 111K, break-ins 101. Um, he's not, I don't think he's going to average over 100 for the whole year. I think he's more of a 95 guy. Um, and we have sort of, we saw it last week, he was, or we got what, an 86 and he got 96. He's still solid. I think he's not going to be too bad, but that Tom and Grant obviously has always been a concern. Back-to-back weeks of 67%, and I don't really see, that's not going to take make it a big uptick. He's going to be less than 75% Tom and Grant. His points per minute are great, but it's only what, what is it? He's 845, what's like Walsh, for, just for example, just because they're very, very close. So 845, is Walsh 886? Is that what he's priced at? Um, so that's the case. Yeah, 41K to go up to Walsh. And Walsh is going to be a 105 plus, I think, for the uh, for the rest of the year. So for me, I think uh, Crouch to Walsh is definitely a trade you could look at. You've obviously got Dacos, you've got Goulden. If you want to go high, you've got guys like Josh Dunkley, Noah Anderson that have put up some big scores lately and looking really good. So guys like that you could look at as well. Um, so for me, I'd probably trade Crouch, but it is team dependent. If you've got... McKercher and Massimo, I'd trade those two before I would Crouch. Blake Howes, 4.3k, jumping off him. Um, it's probably not a bad time to jump off of him. You could keep him. Salem's out for, for a little bit with a hamstring injury. Um, 45 break even. If he puts up a 60-plus score again, he's got more cash to make. So he's not necessity to trade out. He's a good loop as well. If you've got a close in a gray, like Cozy Graham on the bench and, and you've got uh, I don't even know what other rookie would be in defence that you're probably looping between, but maybe it's a Zach Williams. Maybe you can... Zach Williams plays first before those two. Maybe you can loop Williams just to see what he does. You can loop probably this week. So it's not... It isn't a must trade for Howes, but it is a good trade. You could still you can still make cash by going to Graham or Closey, and that's still a decent move um, that you could make. So, um, yeah, definitely something to look at. Jai Clark, again, team depend if you can make a trade work with him. I think he can go... 50 break even, only got two last week being the sub. Um, it just You sort of just don't know with Chris Scott if he's going to sub Clark or not. Um, part of us, it, that we as coaches, we probably either want him, one, to be dropped from the team or playing um, and not being the sub because uh, then we can uh, keep with that cash gen. But yeah, if you can if you can trade and make it work, um, I don't mind doing something like that. So yeah, I would be looking um, potentially at that. Riley Sanders, um, 3.1k jumping off of him. He's probably one that is less a priority than the McKercher, Massimo, Jai Clark, guys like that. Well, I don't think Jai Clark's priority either. I just don't think you can really make that much cash off him. But Riley Sanders, 5.19, 50 break even. I think with Tom Liberatore out this week, I'd be holding. Saints this week's a good matchup. I think with all the outcry this week about subbing out Sanders, I just don't think they're going to be subbing him out this week. 
Um, we've obviously talked about the Bont having a good run. That means, obviously, Sanders going to have a good run as well. Next four games, Saints, Frio, Hawthorne, Richmond are pretty good. So, um, And he is hopefully going to get forward. So he's, I think someone said he's like 36% um, forward time. So hopefully he keeps it and he can become a forward and be at F6. But yeah, for me, uh, I'd be holding for another week. And if he is the sub again, or sorry, if he's subbed out again, or he puts up a poor score, I think we can then look to move off of him next week, regardless if he gets forward status or not. So I'd probably be holding for one more week, personally. Um, then we've got a lot of rookies here. Um, actually, no, sorry, Miss Salem. Salem's got to go. Obviously, he's injured 2.5k jumping off him. Obviously, the break even is huge, but um, yeah, you have to, you just have to get off of him. Um, he's, he's not going to be playing post the bye for a few weeks. Caleb Windsor, another good player to jump off of. Two and a half thousand are jumping off him. Got some money on his head. I think he's over 400K for like 420 or something. Is it something like that um, for Windsor? No, 401. So yeah, still can make cash there. Going him down to a to a Garcia, mate, pocket you what? Um, just under 200K there. So uh, yeah, for me, he's a trade. Uh, James Jordan can go as well. Um, obviously, again, if if you've got other issues, you could keep him realistically, but um, he is not a bad shout to um, trade out as well. And then 10th most trade out player is Zane Dersma. Um, I think probably people got more issues than a, than a Dersma, but then again, he's got a 33. He only went up 5K, 51 break even now. I don't think he's hit that for a few weeks, actually. Um, he got a 60 last week and then a 30 and 80, so... It was looking like that 80 was more of an outlier. So for me, I'd be looking at trading him. He's made some decent cash, and you can go him down and, again, make a fair bit of cash there. Gorn, I'd be holding. Obviously, we're just talking about a few more players here. Gorn, I'd be holding. He's averaging 123, like essentially 123. Like He's been fantastic. One of the picks of the season. Um, he's over a million dollars. You trade him. Good luck trying to get him back in. Um, so, yeah, he's looking like the, the top two ruck now. I think English is probably pushed out for the moment, and it's Marshall and Gorn. So for me, I'd be holding because um, you're going to want him um, back. Um, so it's just a wasted trade for me. Campbell can go. Obviously, on buy, made some cash. It's probably not a bad time to jump off. The Bont's there. And then I think Dawson's not going to be that far down. Yes, 750 jumping off of him. With Bont and Dawson, I think Bont, you definitely, I think you're still definitely holding. Um, 1.4K jumping off of him. He's down at 953. If he puts up a 120 this week, it would not shock me um, at all. Um, and part of me expects him to do that as well. Uh, dogs need to respond after a poor performance against the Bombers. Um, Bont was very disappointing. That was his worst game since 2015, I think. Uh, and his only, his only other score below 60 um, was back in 2017, where he got a 56, I think. So there was a really, really bad game. Like we like that just shows how bad it is. So for me, Bont is he's got the role still. Dogs were just not at, at the races. He's got the Saints this week. Good matchup. Yeah, Win Hager might run with him, but I think could be a Jack Steele just going head to head with him. But I think Bont will still do what he needs to. So for me, I'd be holding Bont. Um, when it comes to Dawson, uh, role change was there. So I, if I didn't have other issues, I could potentially consider trading him just because of the role change. But I've got Musselman McKerch I want to jump off of um, first, which I'll obviously go with my trades, but they're the two I'm getting rid of. I just think Dawson, I could hold him for another week, which it's a little bit annoying just because his break even is up at 146. So if he drops another 80 or, or less, he's going down a lot. Like if he gets a 96, he's going down 30K. If he goes less than that, it's going down a lot more. But I think it's a bombers. I think if he did play forward, I think he can still go 95 plus. So it's a big watch for the role this week. I think we crouch out. I think he goes back more into the midfield. I still look at that game and go, he had eight of the nine CBAs in the first quarter. Second quarter, he had about 50%, then it started dropping away as the game went on. I think that was just because he didn't have any impact in the first quarter. Hewitt was tagging him, so the coaching staff went, okay, we thought that could happen. He gets tagged. Let's push him more forward, trying to escape that tag, and um, and hopefully that uh, he can uh, do better. So... Yeah, um, I'm what hope, hopeful this week he goes back to a mid roll with Crouch out. Um, surely he does. He was an all Australian midfielder last year, like the captain of the club as well. Um, I'd like to think he's not just going to be a, this guy that's just going to play forward and just be a Mr. Fix It for the Crows. He's, he's one of the main players in there, and I think he'll go back into the midfield this week. But it, maybe that's just more hopeful than anything. He was averaging 108 before this game as well. So, yeah, I think he'll, I think he'll be fine. Um, a few other players here as well. Fife, yep, he can go. Sexton can go. Viney. Again, a bit team dependent. Richmond post the buy could be a hold, and he is now a fair bit cheaper than what he was. So you're not 806, you're not getting the same value. 
that you would have. So you could really hold him. He's a good looper as well. If you've got like a Sanders or someone on the bench, you can have a look on Thursday night, see how he goes. And then if he went poorly, you could then trade, but you could hold him as a loop. Zach Fisher, I still don't know why so many people are jumping off of Zach Fisher, if I'm being um, honest. So he's up, he's still 31% on so he's still a lot of people have got him, but he hasn't been like, he hasn't been amazing, but he's not been bad. Like he's three of his last four have been over eight, uh, have been over 80, um, 76 there, 68 in round one. That was his only poor score. I yeah. I and with McKercher playing a different role, it, he's now sort of the second banana back there behind Sheasel. So for me, yeah, I, I'm not really concerned about him. 69 break even, slowly going up in price as well, and he's not that far off of the top six forwards. So yeah, I think very very low priority, and I'd I'd be not trading him personally. And then you got guys like Gallagher, Pink can go if they if they make the cash you want. Um, Pink could obviously if you have got the trade to do it, you could go him. To, up a bit to a Graham and just make that cash uh, help with that cash gen. Jackson, I'll be holding because he's got the Eagles and he's still not a bad option to have. Good flexibility. Um, Darcy's going to be eased into the into the role, so for me, I'd probably hold at least this week. You could have a plan in place, I guess, if you own Jackson that you will have to train him out maybe at some point um, if his uh, CBA takes a downturn um, drastically when Darcy is up to full fitness. So. Okay, let's go through my top five options for the week and then my trade. So top five options, I think the top two are, are, are pretty much set. Closey one, Will Graham two. If you don't have both those, you need both. So Closey's the priority there and then Graham's next. So once you've got those two, I think they're obviously, as I said, they're the priorities. But going uh, down the list, I think next, I think I'm going to put Walsh there. Just because of the value that he presents um, as a underpriced premium, eight eight six, he's priced at one oh two. I think I heard Sanchez on the hat chat say, um, I think he's a one oh five plus guy, which he's underpriced. I think he can go one ten um, with uh, the midfield, um, a few injuries there at Carlton. So, yeah, I think he's probably number three, but he's not a must have. Like it, it, again, once you've got Graham and Closey, so closing Graham then it becomes team dependent what you can do because some people are going to look for midfielders, some people are going to look for an underpriced forward like a Rankin or a Caldwell or a Lukosius or someone like that. So that's an option there. I think at number four, I would go Blake Drury just because of the negative break even. Um, the double downgrade, as I said, is definitely in play, but I would only go Drury over Garcia this week because Drury's got that negative 20-odd break even and then you can get Garcia the following week. So... I probably want to watch Garcia one more week, personally. He looked good, but I want to see him again, not in the sub vest, hopefully, um, and then look at bringing him in the following week if he's not the sub. So that would be what I'd be looking at. Um, and then at number, so number five, I think if you don't have Flanders, I would put, I'd still put Flanders in at number five. Um, if you don't have him, I think he's the guy that you want. As I said, averaging 105, break evens in the 80s, I think. Was it 85? Or, yeah, 85. So he's not going to get any cheaper anytime soon. So for me, I'd be jumping on him. If you don't, there's plenty of good options, eh, as as mentioned. Like Garcia and uh, Bigger Nuon are still uh, good rookie selections there. If you want to pay top dollar for Henio Steel, they're good options. Yo, still cheap. Marshall, if you're looking for a ruck. Sheezel, if you want to pay real top dollar. But as I said, maybe not this week. Golden and then Dacos was down the list as well. Only 822 coach jumping on him. I do like him. I know he'll get probably some attention he's got. Port Adelaide this week, so I expect a Willem Drew to go to him um, this week. But then he's got uh, the Bombers. Durham's obviously done a job on Bont last week. Could do something similar to Dawson this week. Then Carlton Hewitt's there. I'd be making a priority, Dacos, to be in your team by round nine. That West Coast game could be nasty at Marvel. Um, then the Crows, Frio, Dogs, and um, Demons. So I'll be looking to get him in by round nine. Um, but the next three could be a little bit tricky with some sort of attention. But I do like him. I know the 131 break in, but he can hit that on any week. So I wouldn't be looking at that too much um, there. So, yeah, I think the big decision probably is Dacos, Gordon, or Walsh. I'm currently Walsh um, out of those three there. And, and that probably leads me into my trades for the week. So I am doing pretty much what I did last week. It's probably straight batting, but I do like the trades. So it's going the two most traded out players for the two most traded in. So it is going a Colby McKercher down to Will Graham. Um, or, or Massimo down to Will Graham, whatever you want to do, because Massimo's going out. And then uh, Sam Walsh is coming in as well, uh, as I said, Will Graham. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at doing that. The only thing that does is pushes Sanders to the bench, whether that's a good or a bad thing. Um, 
if he's a pump at a bit. I'm, I'm worried he could put out a pretty good score this week against St. Kilda um, under the roof, no liver. Um, I think that could mean Jack McRae actually has a, has a decent game. I think that it could be Bont, um, McRae, and Trelaw as the three main mids, and Walsh, and sorry, Sanders being the number four guy. So, yeah, I probably want Flanders on my field this week, but it's going to be hard if I bring Walsh in because it's going to push into the bench. So, um, And then push Closey on field. But I don't think that's a bad thing at all. So, But, yeah, beautiful. That's what I'm looking at doing. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are doing with your trades this week um, and any uh, trade questions you guys have got. Put them in the comment section below, and I'll get to those when I can. Hopefully, that'll be before the game starts to help you guys out. Um, but if you did enjoy the video, make sure you do uh, smash a like on the video. It does help out the channel. 200 likes would be fantastic if you guys get, uh, can get us there. That'd be uh, fantastic because, what, we get, I think there's about 2K odd average of people that view this video. So it's, what, one in every 20 people um, that like the video. So, um, yeah, if you can smash a like on the video or even get more than that, that'd be fantastic. Thank you guys for all the support you guys continue to show. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you um, hit the subscribe button below um, as we're on our way to 3,000 subscribers um, and we're nearly at 2050. So uh, make sure you do subscribe and get involved. But uh, yeah, and as I said, check out the Q live Q&A video from last night. Myself, Tim, Holmesy, and Mini Monk uh, answering a heap of questions and will probably um, help you guys out as well because uh, there was a lot of general discussion with with a lot of players. So yeah, it was a really good chat. And again, thanks to Holmesy and Mini Monk for jumping on and Tim as always. So make sure you guys check it out. We'll be back on Friday for the pre-lockout chat at the normal time of 6 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Uh, Western Standard Time. So make sure you guys tune to that ahead of round six. Um, it might be a short one because I'll be heading to the Crows game. So, um, yeah, make sure you guys tune for that. And if you are in Adelaide uh, this afternoon or later on tonight, once you've watched the video, I'll be at the Arkabar, um for the Traders live show. So make sure you go, if you guys are in Adelaide, head down there and, and come say g'day. Um, looking forward to meeting a few of you guys there as well. We'll see a few of you guys again. So thanks guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on Friday or potentially um, later on tonight. So I'm out. Cheers.